Hi, and welcome to Best in Tesla news number 197. Volkswagen says the situation is not survivable and Tesla enters a new market and Tesla is now going to copy GM. And more companies once in on Tesla's charging technologies. And hydrogen gets yet another nail in the coffin. And the EV market continues to grow despite legacy claims of the opposite. But we do know why, as the legacy automakers in China are bleeding and heading for the worst year in a decade. And Tesla enters the top 10 of the most reliable brands on the planet. Oh boy, what are the haters going to hate about now? <laughs> All of this and much, much more on today's episode. Start right in. Let's put our living stereo stylus in this groove. Volkswagen is bleeding and is desperately trying to cut costs by cutting jobs. And then even Volkswagen brand boss said their current situation is not survivable. I did make a whole video this week about the situation that Volkswagen is in and is in discussion to fire 20,000 employees. So if you want to learn more, check that video out. But Stecker Auto also shared this week on X that the Volkswagen brand boss Schaeffer said, we are too slow, too sluggish, too complicated as it is. That's not sustainable. And this is from the same guy that said the roof is on fire for Volkswagen. But it seems like no one is putting out that fire. And it has now spread to the entire building. Schefter also said, among other things, Volkswagen is no longer competitive in many places when it comes to structures and processes. Rising raw materials costs and high interest rates are making cars more expensive, while at the same time there is an aggressive price war, he says. Yes, Tesla is making it extremely difficult for the old guys. And Volkswagen is bleeding badly. And the Volkswagen Group CEO Bloomer said in an interview, I think the goal of building an entry-level car for 20,000 euros in the second half of this decade is realistic. <laughs> but as Alex wrote on X, his statement is not convincing and sounds like a counterstatement to Tesla's 25,000 euro BEV announced by Elon to be made in the Berlin factory. Just like when Tesla held their investor day and talked about how they would build the $25,000 next-gen vehicle only weeks after Volkswagen showed off the concept of their $25,000 car that will come out in 2025. <laughs> but as Alex also wrote, it's a well-known play of CEOs to claim something is coming in five plus years out in the future to keep potential future buyers while having no idea how to make it happen. Like we have seen through the last decades, all the production targets and promises about EVs that they didn't hit. Everything is always five years out in the future. As Alex continued, if Bloomer knew Volkswagen wouldn't have to cut 20 billion euros in cost and cut 20,000 jobs and ask employees for a 20% pay cut. The truth is that Bloomer knows the 20,000 euro vehicle is not realistic for the entire Volkswagen group as of today and likely not for the future too, especially with the 6.5% operating margin target. Yeah, the roof is no longer on fire, the damn building is on fire, it's not looking good for Volkswagen. As Volkswagen is also on track for its smallest year of Chinese sales since 2012, according to CNBC's analysis of public data for the first three quarters of this year. Volkswagen's biggest market, where they get 50% of their profits from. But do you remember the arrogant opinion toward Tesla only six years ago? Kündigungsweltmeister, ich nenne ja. keine Namen. Es gibt Unternehmen, die verkaufen mit Mühe 80.000 Autos pro Jahr. Volkswagen 11 Millionen in dem Jahr. Dann gibt es Unternehmen wie Volkswagen, die erwirtschaften pro Jahr einen Gewinn von 13, 14 Milliarden Euro. Und wenn ich richtig informiert bin, vernichtet Tesla pro Quartal einen dreistelligen Millionenbetrag. Schmeißt die Mitarbeiter raus, wie sie lustig sind, also Sozialkompetenz, weiß ich nicht, wo, ich, wo das ist. Also da bitte ich jetzt wirklich mal die Kirche im Dorf zu lassen und nicht Äpfel mit Birnen zu vergleichen. Ja, <lacht> 
And only four years after this clip, the Volkswagen Group is holding meeting about how Volkswagen can catch up to Tesla and found out Tesla can make EVs three times faster than they can and is actually starting to make some good money on selling EVs. And today, Tesla is expanding its Berlin factory, has the world's best-selling car, while Volkswagen is cutting costs and jobs to try to stay afloat. How times have changed. In today's digital age, we are all tethered to our devices, relying on them for both work and pleasure. My professional life is anchored to my computer, and I often relax in the world of online streaming and smart technology. My phone is a vault of my private information. With such a tech-centric lifestyle, it's crucial to have a strong digital defense. That's where my sponsor NordVPN comes into play. A VPN or virtual private network serves as your personal cyber security. The standout feature of NordVPN is their encryption capability, which secures your online activities, disguise your IP address, and conceal your digital location. This layer of anonymity significantly boosts your online safety and makes it extremely difficult for hackers to breach your privacy. For me, the peace of mind knowing that my online interactions are protected is invaluable. NordVPN goes beyond just changing your IP address; it acts as an all-encompassing digital shield, fighting off malware. Stopping trackers, blocking annoying ads, and maintaining robust cybersecurity, even when you're not actively connected to the VPN server. Navigating NordVPN is effortless. Just a single click to select your preferred country, and your IP address is instantly matched to that location. It's that easy. If safeguarding your online preference matters to you, consider NordVPN's proposal here by clicking the link down below and choose a two-year plan. You'll receive additional four months for free. With NordVPN's 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Click the link and start your more secure online experience today. And a big thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. First, we heard BP was buying Tesla's hardware for the upcoming charging network, and as I said, this will not be the last. And now, only a couple of weeks later, we have the next domino lined up. British petrol station giant EG Group announced it will buy superchargers from Tesla. It is the first deal of its kind entering into by Tesla with a third-party charging point operator in Europe. EG wants to expand from 6,000 charges currently to over 20,000 across 3,600 locations. The chargers will be available for all electric vehicles, of course. The chargers will be branded EV Point and will leverage Tesla's. Industry-leading technology. The value of the transition is undisclosed. Tesla's senior director of charging infrastructure said, "The rapid installation of reliable, easy-to-use EV charges infrastructure is the right step toward a sustainable future and a key area of focus for us at Tesla." For this reason, we are excited to make our fast charging hardware available for purchase to EG Group and other leaders in the space. The Tesla charging network is going to be such a nice business case for Tesla, as this is a returning revenue every single year that will only increase as the EV market increases as well, as well as Tesla supercharging stations, of course. And Tesla is even more dominating in the EV charging market than the in the EV race itself, as Tesla charger are cheaper to build and install than the competition, and are much, much, much more reliable. There's a reason why even Electrify America has adopted Tesla's NACs at their stations, and BP and EG is also the first of many to come. Soon enough, we will probably see announcement of Exxon, Chevron, Aramco join as well. And all of this will only give Tesla more credibility with car buyers that are looking for buying a new EV. Well, it's pretty much all just Tesla underneath, so why not just get a Tesla? Renew Economy wrote a nice piece on Tesla wanting to take on electricity retailers in Australia. Tesla confirmed its plans to take on electricity retailers in Australia, saying it will seek to combine rooftop solar batteries and EVs and disrupt the business model of traditional incumbents. The move was first flagged back in September and has now been made official after Australian energy regulators on Tuesday said it had accepted the application and opened it up for submission. Tesla has already provided technology for numerous big batteries in Australia, including the original Hornsdale power plant. And Victorian big battery, along with household batteries with the Powerwall product and the creation of the virtual power plant that it markets through energy locals. 
Like its similar venture in Texas and the UK, its initial focus will be on customers who own either a Tesla EV or a Powerwall or a big Megapack battery in the case of commercial customers. These numbers are around 150,000 in Australia and are growing quickly. Tesla's rationale is that it would like to control the applications to service the grid market such as pricing event and frequency control, and it will also help manage the load of the large and growing EV supercharging network across the country. The move by Tesla in Australia for the local electricity retailer's license is significant for a number of reasons and not just its potential impact on the business model of the incumbent, particularly the big three, AGL, Origin and Energy Australia and the federal government-owned Snowy Hydro. It also comes amid a big leap in the uptake of EVs in Australia, the huge surge in rooftop solar across the country in response to the fossil fuel rise in household electricity bills and renewed focus on the importance of customers' energy resources or distributed energy resources to the grid. There are growing discussions about how to best orchestrate the rooftop solar, house batteries and EVs to help the gap created by the massive excess of Australia's aging coal-fired generators. Tesla think it knows and, as in the car industry where it had no legacy business to protect, it is not afraid of pushing the boundaries to where it thinks the customers want to go. It should be fascinating, indeed. And we did see Tesla also expand their market of the Powerwall, which is now available in Portugal. So getting closer to Denmark, so crossing my fingers that we will get them in Denmark very soon as well. And surprise, surprise, the French city that pioneered hydrogen buses will opt for battery electricity in the future due to ongoing problems and high cost. No! You don't say. As fewer subsidies of hydrogen transport and improved fully electric buses range means Pau's first 12 fuel cell buses will probably be the last. Hopefully all these hydrogen shutdowns we are hearing about on a monthly basis, basically. Everfuel closing down all stations in Denmark, Shell closing down stations in the UK and Germany, German hydrogen train operator will switch to electricity. As they said, they are abandoning the idea of future hydrogen trains, arguing that the battery electric models are cheaper to operate. <laughs> no shit. The same goes for the German hydrogen bus that got retired after just one year of operation because the filling station broke down. Even one of the world's most bullish advocate for hydrogen had to admit that batteries are a better option than hydrogen for these huge mining trucks. And as Tesla has already shown, semi-trucks is also far superior as an EV compared to a hydrogen. I really hope all of this death of the hydrogen projects and billions of dollars wasted by our governments will wake up some of the politicians and get rid of all these subsidies and stop the stupid plan of building hydrogen stations every 200 kilometers on the European highway. As we have a mountains of evidence now that I have just shown you of real world projects that just don't work. But at the same time, we have Toyota that wants to make a hydrogen van running on hydrogen in a combustion engine, making the already stupid and inefficient hydrogen vehicles worse, as the range of the hydrogen van will only be 120 miles or 200 kilometers, even though it has the Mirage 3 hydrogen tanks in it. That will cost $80 to fill up, but you will only get 200 kilometers of range. And as the YouTube channel Engineered Explained also showed that hydrogen in a combustion engine is so inefficient that you would never be able to fit all of that hydrogen into a normal passenger car and be able to get 300 miles of range. It's physically not possible. Toyota just took stupid to a whole new level. But I did make a whole video about this, so if you want to learn more, check that one out, link down below. And let's squeeze in the last short news topics into this new show. Yes, it's time for the Tesla Shorts. Electric vehicle registration grew at a robust pace through the third quarter of this year, with EV share rising to 7.5% in the US market according to Xperia. A year earlier, the EV share was 5.2%. So the most recent registration numbers show strong demand despite automakers' concern that EV supplies are getting ahead of the sales volume. 
And then we look at the best-selling EV brand in the US and Ford and GM are saying supply is getting ahead of sales volume, completely ignoring the elephant in the room that sells almost 10x as the runner-up. So let's say it one more time. There is no EV demand problem, but legacy automakers see a lack of demand for their inferior EV products. And one EV that does not see a demand problem is the Cybertruck. Tesla has so much demand for this truck that Tesla now is going to copy GM. Yes, Mary, you led, and Tesla is going to copy you. As we saw one year ago, GM limited warranty transfer and banned buyers from flipping Hummer EVs. And Tesla will do the same thing for the Cybertruck, making sure that you can't sell the Cybertruck in the first 12 months after you buy to make sure there is not a big insane aftermarket sales of the Cybertruck, at least for the first 12 months after launch. Some have talked about, is this even legal? Well, GM did it and it seemed to work out just fine, so I guess Tesla will be able to do it as well. But GM has only delivered about 1,200 Hummer EVs in all of 2023, so even with a slow production ramp of the Cybertruck, I don't think it will take long before we have more Cybertrucks on the road than the Hummer EV. Annex Peng continues to copy everything Tesla does. Here is a look at their user interface. Does this remind you of some other EV brands full self-driving user interface? No? Then it's probably just me. And India is reportedly consider a request from Tesla to lower tariffs for imported electric vehicles, according to Indian government officials. Tesla asked New Delhi for initial tariff concessions that would allow it to offset India's steep custom duty of 70% for cars worth less than $40,000 and 100% for cars worth $40,000 or more. In their talks with Indian government, Tesla said it could make a vehicle for less than $30,000 that the company would sell in India. India and potentially export to the rest of the region using the country as a production hub. This would be a big deal for Tesla to be able to start production in India and produce a low-cost next-gen vehicle here as well, both for the Indian market, even though the Indian market is not big yet, but it is the world's largest developing market. So to get started now and grow together with the developing market of India would be great. And India also has low labor costs, so that would also be a great export hub for Tesla as we know it from China. And we saw a nice video from Tesla this week from the Berlin factory, where the lobby is now open and all done and ready for the public to come and take a look. And at the same time, their version 4 supercharger have been built at the factory that is also now open to the public, so I guess I should take a little road trip down there very soon and check it out. And if you meet people that say, what do you mean when you're always saying the old guys' EVs are uncompetitive and that is why they are seeing demand problem and not Tesla? Well, AJ shared the best example of exactly that this week or next. It doesn't get much clearer than this. The BMW iX is 16,000 euros more expensive in Germany and as Dr. Know It All also shared in his video about it, it is even worse in the US. So this is the best case scenario. But still the BMW loses on every single specs by a huge margin. And the charging that is not listed here is also in Tesla's favor, Tesla 250 kilowatt and the BMW 150 kilowatt. And the software is of course a whole other thing on its own. But the sales number speaks for the Himself. This is in Germany and they launched pretty much at the same time. BMW's iX did actually have a month head start, but look at this. This is the competition on their home turf in Germany. And don't forget that on top of all of this, Tesla has the industry leading lowest maintenance cost and BMW some of the highest. Doesn't get much clearer than this. What is going on in the market right now? And we also get to see these charts of the 10 most reliable brands on the planet. Lexus leading the way with all the other Japanese and Korean automaker here. But look who has been sneaking itself in on the top 10 spot, Tesla. So according to what car, Tesla is now in the top 10 list of the most reliable cars. 
But Tesla car sucks. Well, that is not what reality shows us. But we don't see Ford and GM and the Germans here. Then we have to look at the other end of the list, the 10 most unreliable brands. Ah, here we find Jaguar, Audi and Mercedes-Benz. Yeah, the Tesla Qs must be getting real desperate, not much to hate about anymore, not even Tesla's quality. And remember, Tesla has so many markets they are not even in yet. And here is a little glimpse of what usually happens when Tesla enters a new market. Here you can see Thailand, where Tesla just entered this year, and boom, the Model Y is in the top 10 of the best-selling cars in the country. Year to date, Tesla is up only a tiny 1,813% over the same period last year. Nice. And speaking of Thailand, the Prime Minister of Thailand visited the Tesla factory in Fremont and jumped on the Cybertruck, quite literally. And he wrote on X, my pleasure, visiting Tesla home in California. Great discussion on the future collaboration on EVs and clean energy. It is my hope that this collaboration will cement Thailand as a hub for EV and renewable energy in the years to come. Nice. But it was not just the politicians from Thailand that got a tour of the Fremont factory. People from the Indian government were also there. Wonder if they just went straight over to GM plant in Detroit afterward and talked to Mary. Because, you know, she's the leader. And Fiskus shared Q3 earnings and it was not looking good. They got the EV to market even after the bankruptcy in 2014. But now it is here. And that was the easy part, as Elon would say. Now start the difficult part, as we can see in their earnings report, where we see Fisker is losing a lot of money and would have faced imminent bankruptcy again without the insurance of $450 million convertible debt notes. So let's see how long they can stay afloat. Hopefully long enough to get to profitability, but quite a long way to go. And Tesla China raised prices yet again. Now for the Model 3 and Y rear-wheel drive. Seems like this is becoming a weekly thing. Come on, Tesla Qs, tell us why this is a bad thing. But at the same time, we can see Tesla is still selling very nicely and is about 37% above last year's numbers year to date. So demand problem? I don't think so. And we always hear how many people will lose their job because we are going to green energy. But that is just not the case. Clean technologies are powering job growth in the global energy sector. With the workforce rising to 67 million last year, clean energy employment now makes up over half of all energy jobs after overtaking fossil fuel in 2021. And Soya shared that Tesla has an ad on YouTube. This is Tesla's first ever paid ad on YouTube, as we have seen, that has more than 2.7 billion active monthly the user, or about 34% of the global population. So a good place to make some ads, and Lars from Tesla tuned in and said, Haha, yes, Tesla makes the safest car on the planet. People should know that, indeed. And Dwayne The Rock Johnson was on Joe Rogan's podcast this week, and to everyone's surprise, he didn't even know what a Cybertruck was, or that Tesla had an SUV. He didn't know anything about Tesla other than everyone he knows that has a Tesla loves it. But I think Joe pretty much sold The Rock on the idea of the Cybertruck, but The Rock is a hardcore Ford F-150 fan and has a partnership with Ford. So let's see if we will ever see Dwayne in a Cybertruck. But we did get another great example of how afraid Ford is of the Cybertruck. Only a week after the Cybertruck climbed this exact hill and posted a video about it on X, as I showed in my last week new show, Jim shared on X the F-150 Lightning doing the exact same hill. Look, we can do it as well. And we got a real great look at the Cybertruck this week of the interior as well. With the special user interface and ambient light and that the seat in the back can actually be folded up so you have a lot of space on the floor in the back. So very, very nice. And uh, yeah, T minus 11 days, guys. And Volkswagen plans to discontinue the ID3 by the end of this decade. In an interview with Volkswagen brand CEO Schaeffer, as we talked about before, he was asked, Do you still need the ID3 at all? Is there even a need for a successor? 
Not necessarily. At the end of the decade, the portfolio will be disentangled anyway when the combustion engines are slowly phased out. We currently have a lot of duplicates in our portfolio, and that makes things a bit complicated. <laughs> yes, and even more so when you think that by the end of this decade, ICE cars will be slowly phased out. Oh boy, I think Shifter will get a rude awakening by the end of this decade. And Nick, let's share this chat with data from the United States Geological Survey showing the materials we mine. I showed a similar one from the British Geological Survey from 2018 in my video, The Materials We Mine. And this is such a good showcase to the people that think we have to mine half the planet to get lithium for the EVs. All rare earth metals, not just lithium, but all rare earth metals mined in 2022 was less than 1% of the materials we mine. And only 8.7% of that 1% is lithium. If people are worried about mining, EVs are the least of your problems. And as the materials can be recycled in an EV battery, the mining will come to an end eventually and just become part of the circular economy. And even though EVs have skyrocketed over the last four years, precious metal has gone from 1.3 million tons in 2018 to 1.5 million tons in 2022. Still less than 1% of the materials we mine. But I did make a whole video about this a while back. If you want to learn more, I can highly recommend to check it out. Link down below. And Chinese president told Elon Musk that he supports Tesla's development in China, according to a statement from Tesla's Weibo account this week. And Alex wrote on X, I have received credible information, which I will still call rumors that Volvo Cars Polestar has canceled the BEV delivery plans for its suppliers. That does not sound good. So even though Polestar makes nice cars, we can assume, as Alex Wright, the Polestar has a demand problem, as there is no reason for such a move otherwise. And this guy have been driving his Tesla Model S for 1.9 million kilometers. What a purely built car. And Volkswagen has recalled 100% of the ID for electric vehicle in the United States due to flammability of interior materials, according to Nissan's document. The ID4 has been subject to a few recalls in the past, one in April resolving door opening during driving, not a good one, and one in April as well helping to address the stalling issue, and another in January took care of electric issues with a 12 volt battery that could have resulted in a battery fire. Yeah, Tesla has learned how to build cars, but the old guys still have to learn how to build EVs. And Nicholas also shared this article up from Sweden about the union that is threatening Tesla's employees. But as this article showed, there is hardly any Tesla employees that want to be in the union. As he said, this is the best employer I have ever had. Are we afraid? Absolutely, but not for our employer. Yes, we are afraid of the union. I have received threats. It literally seems like unions all over the place is just turning into mafias, just wanting to control it all. And Lucid has fully revealed its first SUV called Gravity. Production start late 2024, if they are still alive, of course. <laughs> but looks very cool and good specs all around, of course. It is a Lucid and even a big nice front where you can now sit up there. Oh boy, the innovations. <laughs> and to all the people that say Tesla is losing market share, James put some facts on the table in his video this week with his co-host Loki. And the fact is, Tesla is expanding its share of new vehicle sales globally, as it does every year. Exactly, and Elon even tuned in and said correctly. And before we end off with a bit of fun, I just want to give a big shout out to my newest supporter of this channel, my new YouTube member, Nicholas Henry. Thank you so much for all your support. I am doing this all by myself, but you guys are all the producers of this new show. Thank you. And let's end off with a bit of fun. The legacy automakers are showing off their superiority in build quality. Guys, I've had the opportunity to test multiple Cadillac Lyric electric cars, and Cadillac has engineered the perfect charge port here. Watch the quality of this. 
<laughs> They're all like that. How could they do it so terribly? That is all we have time for in this new show. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. It really does help this video out a lot so others can find it on YouTube. And if you did like it, maybe you want to consider hitting that subscribe button notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos just for like this one. And don't forget if you want to become an executive producer and get some news articles during the week, some exclusive videos, early access, ad free, sponsor free and all that good stuff and access to all my research, spreadsheets and charts, head over to bestintested.com and join with the members button. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for your support. And if you want to support the channel even more, remember you can, for as little as $1, become a patron of this channel and get your shout out on this show. You can also become a member of the YouTube channel to get a shout out and some extra perks. Hit the members button to find out more. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter. I tweet all the news as it comes out and more. And check out the merch store to get some merchandise and support the show. Now it's also possible to support the show without buying anything, becoming a member or a patron. There is a link to a donation options in the show notes. And also as simple as hitting the super like button. But going forward, I will be making more videos for patrons and members only. And I will give my YouTube members and patrons early access to my videos whenever possible and make my videos ads free for members and patrons only. So don't mess out. And thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and be nice. <laughs>